Professor Matai is iconic uh, in the area of management education as well as in industry. Uh, I don't think uh, that there are many people who are in management education or in business who haven't heard about him or know about him. And for me, my insights into him was also prob probably uh, accelerated and made more deeper by my association with CK Prada because CK was in IAM during the time Professor Mathai was also there. So I've had some interesting insights about the things that happened there. So I'm extremely grateful for recognizing for this recognition and I'm honored to receive it. Thank you very much. So I'll I'll move on to the second part of why I was invited here, um, the valedictory speech. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about why do we exist in a business? Why do businesses exist? What's the fundamental reason? I think it'll be good to wind back a little bit and understand the current context. So if you look at the late 70s and 80s, is when the, the corporate Raiders, whether it was Carl Icahn or Michael Milliken, the kinds of them that decided that shareholder value maximization was the fundamental goal. And <clears throat> they went after companies to look at underlying value that was not realized. And they, this philosophy was further compounded by Professor Milton Friedman, who also made a statement that the fundamental purpose of a corporation is shareholder wealth maximization. And that drove, and it's been driving for the last 50 years, the behavior expectations is shareholder wealth maximization. Now, has the world become a better place because of that? Probably has, but it could have been a better, even better place I fundamentally believe yes. Now, why we have built great companies, great products, uh, great services over the last 50 years, it has come at a very high cost of inequity. Now, inequity, so we keep talking about what makes a nation developed. And we say GDP. <coughs> Now, GDP is not at all a measure of a nation's progress or size or development. If GDP was the only thing, Saudi Arabia should be a developed nation. Now, for me, equity is such an important part of a measure of development. And if it is there for the country, it is certainly there for the company. Because we are micro-representations of a country. Right. So if you look at inequity in corporations, it is extremely immense. So the US leads this on a multiple of 265 as a value difference between the lowest paid and the highest paid. 265 is an obscene number. Unfortunately, India doesn't lag far behind. It's at 250. Now, the difference between this is that at least the starting base in the U.S. is far higher. The starting base in India is abysmally low and the multiple is very high. So, building a purpose which works around, works beyond shareholder maxima. I'm not saying shareholder maximization is bad. It is one vector. And we have to keep reminding ourselves that it's only one vector. There are many vectors on which we need to build an organization. Now for us, for us as a company, we look at six stakeholders. We look at our customer, we look at our employee, we look at our supplier, our distributor, our investor, and society as six stakeholders that we need to serve in a very balanced manner, not necessarily in a disproportionately different way. 
And when we say this is our purpose, right, we don't be actively dealing a purpose from the reason why our business exists or our, or our profits. Uh, for a lot of companies, they link pro a purpose to the way they build products, right? They talk about they talk about products need to be built, which is environmentally friendly. You know, we make products, so there is a sliver of commerce, a commercial intention in the purpose. In our case, it's completely different. So, our purpose is called conscience in action. That's what we do. So, we each of our stakeholders, we look at. If you are on the other side, you know the golden rule in most spiritual beliefs is do unto others what you would like others to do unto you. So that's the fundamental belief in our conscience and action. So if you look at a customer, if you were a customer, would you behave the way you are behaving if you were a seller? Most of us don't. When we are customers, our expectations are very high. And when we are sellers, we tend to come up with a lot of excuses as to why we can't do that. So this hypocrisy, bridging this hypocrisy is one of the fundamental vectors of what you can do to a customer. Now, is this something which is a turn of a switch, we can do it tomorrow? No, it's a journey. It's a long, consistent journey. but. If you do not put purpose ahead of profit, you're never going to accomplish this journey or even move forward in this journey. Let me give you another example of employees as a stakeholder. Right? We have a fundamental belief that we should not build a business on the back of cheap idiots. We don't want to do that. Right? That is blood money. Right? So somebody is paid, paid less and we make a lot of profit for ourselves and for our shareholders. There's something wrong with that, right? So, I, I don't mean to trivialize what the IT industry has done. They've done a phenomenal job of scaling. But the fundamental thing is cheap Indians. Now, Indian software engineers were not cheap. The Indian IT industry would not be successful, which is okay. I mean, we started in 1999 with a Y2K was the opportunity. It's been 24 years. After 24 years of being present, why did we not be the first to bring chat GPT? It's a question that we need to ask ourselves, right? If you're still coding, and if you're still providing software services for the Western world, you're still relying on cheap Indians. Now, if the Africans learn software in English, and they become cheap, guess where the business is going to go, right? So this is not sustainable. So for us, this is an audacious goal. So we have a factory in Italy. We pay our shop, shop floor, shop employees 30 lakhs in Italy. That's the market. You don't pay 30 lakhs, they don't come to work, right? The technology for that factory is going from a factory in Kaibutu, right? and they are profitable. So what's wrong with this? Right? So it's a mindset. It's the mindset not of the blue collar employee, but the mindset of the white collar employee. You look at plastic bottles as an analogy. They're so cheap, therefore they get abused. But if those bottles were expensive, we'll find ways to preserve them reuse them, right? Bring value to that. It's the same thing with people. If we put more value on our people, we will use them very carefully. We will not abuse them, right? So our goal in our company as part of our purpose is to be able to pay what we pay in Italy. Now this is, this, this a, this a, it's got nothing to do with shareholder maximization. Right? But I personally believe if you do this and if you're successful, your shareholder maximization will just go exponentially high. So I think it's these things that we drive as much as we drive profit. Right?
and there is a whole host of stuff, right? For employees, for instance, in our company, nobody needs to apply for leave. So we trust you. So if you, if you think you have to take leave and it's necessary, please go ahead, just tell your manager that you're not going to come to work, right? We don't, nobody needs to apply for travel permission. We trust you. If you believe travel is necessary, please go ahead and do it, right? You don't need to submit your bills for approval. We trust you, right? If you're following the rule, it goes straight into accounting and it gets built. So it's fundamental change in the culture of the organization and there is a purpose why we do it because there is a larger reason why we exist than just profit. So we call our management philosophy or we call it a management and governance philosophy, we call it the tension triangle. On top of the triangle, you have purpose, which is conscience and action. One anchor of the other side of the, another point of the triangle is our profit, goals, sales, EBITDA, return on capital employee. The third is risk. If we don't take risks, we will not fulfill our purpose. So for instance, paying our shop employees 30 lakhs is a risk that we need to take. But if we don't take that risk, we will not fulfill our purpose. But if we take that risk, there is a compromise possible on profit. How do you manage these things? So it's, that's what we call it the tension triangle. It's constantly under tension. And management's job is to make sure that there is a balance in this whole thing. We will never get a equilateral triangle at any time. But you just got to make sure that it is not an acute angle triangle. Try and bring the balance to the whole thing. So, you know, in our country, there is so much that we have pride in. But if you really sift through that, a lot of our pride is our past. Our rishis invented the zero. There was people who wrote this, who wrote that. We claim virtues of our ancestors. But what are we doing to create a present which the future will look back and feel proud of? I think that's the fundamental thing that we need to do. So for me, Chandrayaan is, okay, it's a technical achievement, phenomenal. But for me, it is an achievement of the present, which the future is going to look back and say, wow, we have done something phenomenal, right? And the best part of Chandrayaan is it's country agnostic. It could have been fired from anywhere in the world and it would have still done the job. So it was, you know, the, the thing that really bothers me in the press, where they say, oh, we did it for 600 crores, whereas NASA would have spent 2 billion. That's not the point. What is it that we achieved? We put that damn lander in the south pole of the moon, nobody's been able to do it, right? That is the achievement, right? That's phenomenal. That's country agnostic, it can be done, it could have been done anywhere by us, by Indians. I think that's really the, the point of pride. And we, in our institutions, whether it is academics or whether it is in profit-making organizations, we need to build a present that the future will look back and say, wow, they've done a great thing. Yeah. So I want to close with a story that uh, CK used to tell quite often, right? It's a story about a frog. So there was this uh, villager who was walking by a well and he heard a voice uh, saying, please help me. So he went into the well and he saw this frog sitting right at the bottom and saying, please help me get out, right? So he said, uh, okay, hold on. This is a good Samaritan. So I will go to the village, bring a long stick, I'll put it down and you can hop up. I said, okay. So he went, walked all the way to the village, brought back a stick, 
put this, but he came back. The frog, frog was outside. So he said, how come? He says, you asked me to help. I walked all the way there and I brought this stick. And you're out. How come? He says, there's a poisonous snake inside. So the moral of the story is, we have it in us to get out of the well, right? But we don't need a threat. Can we get out of the well on our own and make things happen? So thank you again for the opportunity.